Hey guys, my name is Dran, and today I wanted to go over some manga I worked on before Penumbra. The manga in question being Executioner. I know, it's a pretty sick ass name. It's pretty kick ass. So without further ado, let's start. So I made this back in 2022 and I stopped working on it around July 2023. It wasn't a one shot, uh, it was a series so it went chapter by chapter. The gap between this and Penumbra was long because I was actually in the process of rebooting this manga, or at least until I decided to start a one shot instead. There was a lot I learned from this series, mainly story stuff, which is why every time someone asks me advice on manga, I tell them to just start making something, because through making it, you'll just learn what worked, what didn't work, you know what I mean? I'll get into more why I wanted to reboot it, but for now, I'm going to talk about the Beninging. There was a comic pitch contest I entered, and at that time, I had a concept for Executioner. Bare bones, but it was there. Initially, it was also not called Executioner, it was just called Manny Manny Monster, but the concept of Executioners was in the story. The concept was a world where manifestation is real, or more real, depending on how you see it. I had always thought about manifestation because of how interesting it sounded. I mean, you're telling me, the stuff I think about has energy and can make its way into the real world? Mm -hmm. And if I think about it enough, it'll happen? Huh? Dude, I'd be thinking all the time. I'm a freaking manifestation generator. JK, LOL. <laughs> so the idea was that when someone thinks about something intensely, goes through a traumatic event with an emotional response, or something that causes PTSD, I guess, would indirectly manifest an ability that is too much for them to handle, thus creating a manifested monster, which they become the monster, if that wasn't clear. It's the nature of how this world works with the manifestation being a realer concept, and so the organization named Executioners, uh -huh, the title, would be responsible for detaining these monsters. Yes, detaining. Not executing, cause I thought that'd be a neat thing to catch people off guard. Yeah, big stuff, I know. So much so, as I'm writing this out, it's making my brain hurt, which is foreshadowing just how many notes I wrote for this series. Dude, I don't even know what half of this shit is. <laughs> erm, I mean, I'm professional, of course. My main goal with this was to have a really cool power system, that's just what I wanted. I wanted a really cool and unique power system that everything revolves around. Which isn't necessarily the worst thing, but it definitely caused some tunnel vision. And that tends to happen in manga, like a lot of people who start out that are really inspired by shonen stuff end up wanting to make their own shonen, and a lot of the time it ends up feeling stale because of that, at least in my opinion. I definitely value stories that come from someone's personal experiences rather than being solely inspired by like the big three shonens. Not, not that there's anything wrong with that. No, of course not. And so finally, how would you fight these manifested monsters? These manifested goons? I figured you could use regular methods like fighting with weapons, but the characters could manifest powers if they did it intentionally, that is, since there's a concept of intentional manifesting and unintentional manifesting. Like, oh, I manifested fire, so I'm the manifestation of fire or something like that. I'd probably word it better, but that's just the gist of it. Anyway, at the time, I thought this was a really cool concept for a world and power system because it also conveyed their themes through what they wanted to manifest. And this also helped me as I was learning writing for the first time. So what do I think about it now? I think that the entire concept uh, is really broad. <laughs> And as such, the characters needed to have a lot of depth to really make use of it. The other issue from having a concept that's so broad and expansive like this is that conveying that idea is just going to be challenging, or at least in a way that's engaging for the reader. And at that time, I felt like I wasn't a good enough writer to tackle something like this, or if this was even a good concept to begin with. If I were to redo it, knowing what I know now, I'd probably just make a simpler power system. When you're making this stuff, you always have to think about the perspective of the reader. Oh boy, I can't wait to read my favorite manga One Piece. What? He ate a fruit that made his body into rubber? That's cool! I wonder what he'll do with it! Hey look! This manga called Berserk looks cool! Let me read it! Oh my god. I, I get it. I get it now. No. 
At the end of the day, the best kinds of power systems in Shonen are the ones you can imagine easily, as well as coming up with new powers based in that system. Overall, I love Executioners and what I did with it. I like looking back on it sometimes to see how I approached it and what it looked like. Of course, I think it's far from perfect. I see it as that one Krabby Patty from Spongebob, to be honest, but it's still something I held close to my heart, even though realizing all my mistakes four chapters in was not a very good feeling. Anyway, um, I think I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah, that's... Here are the main characters. Conrad Hakim, the main protag who can manifest anything onto himself. So this story was following his quest on getting closure, specifically in finding his dad that abandoned him. The character motivation was okay, looking back on it, but definitely wasn't fleshed out enough as a character with strong traits. And because of that, at some point I felt lost on how to write him in a way that wasn't a regular shonen dude. I felt humor could have carried him, but nah. He's just the standard dumb shonen protag, and if you don't already know, the dumb shonen protagonist is I fight I enjoy the fight I eat I eat a lot I fight again I get angry and I don't know common sense his power is basically just turning his body into whatever he wants at the cost of it being painful so if he wanted more strength, he would manifest bigger muscles and then his body would change as a result of what he manifested. So in short, he's got issues with his father and wants to find him and yada yada yada, you get it. May. She's a character who was well more thought out in comparison, and as a result led to a lot of people telling me they liked her the most. Her power was also pretty nice. She manifested her hate for monsters into the sword she used, and then the sword came to life. If I redid Executioners, I think I'd probably use this character as the lead instead. Her backstory involves her family of Executioners being slain by a mysterious manifestation, and so she becomes an Executioner but purely from her bottled up hatred for that monster. I feel more confident explaining this character than Conrad, and that really just comes from a character with a good premise. Cyrus Hakim, the main character's father and also the antagonist. His story is a fall from grace with him losing his wife and then spiraling into a villain. But it wasn't very compelling or believable, if I'm being honest. I know anime and manga have a lot of things like that where things aren't really believable but it turned out that way anyway, and that's fine. But when it comes to something that's like more serious to the plot, I, I want it to make more sense. But I rocked with it anyway because I wanted him to be the villain. I love father versus son archetypes, and they, I think just think they're really interesting. His power was the manifestation of control, and so he could place an orbit onto anything he chose, including himself. So thematically, everything revolved around him, and he was the reason for for like 90% of things that happened randomly. Now this power, I gotta admit, it's a banger. It feels like a power that would have been in JoJo. And as such, the fights that I envisioned for him to have were gonna be just really cool and really fun to write. You know, if, if I ever got to writing chapter 30 or some shit. And then the cherry on top was that he'd always talk in a way where he, it sounds like he's still controlling everything. Like, I control this happening or I control that happening or this doesn't happen unless I say so. It was just really fun. Out of all the characters in this manga, this guy and Mei were my favorites. Now there are more characters, but they weren't fleshed out enough for me to really speak on. But I can show you how they look, and I think they look pretty okay. This one in particular, I think she looks great. Uh, what can I say? I love woman. All in all, I made four chapters of this. It was fun for sure, but after the fourth chapter, I felt like I'd really messed something up. Like I wrote myself in a hole that I would have to climb out of eventually. And juggling the grand scope of the world, powers, characters, and all the minor details, I it just got overwhelming. I felt that because of my poor writing, it would cause the story to drag, and I didn't want readers to feel that drag too, so ultimately that's what led me to stop working on it. I realized at that point I was a little too ambitious still. I guess you could say I had the one piece effect when writing this. You never, you never. This is why when I give advice for manga work, it's to not overcomplicate it. Just keep it simple starting out. In the manga, I had so much I wanted to explain and show, but I didn't know how to deliver all of that right. And because of that, at the reveal of Cyrus Hakim, people were like, huh? And didn't understand what the actual fuck was on the screen. It was by that point as well that I was getting burnt out of the manga and learned what worked and what didn't work. So, what didn't work? 
I definitely overestimated just how much I'd be able to handle. I learned that it's better to create fewer characters if it means that they'll have more depth, at least at the start. Finally, I'd say that the power system being the main drive was not the move. Around this time, I believed that if I had a cool power system, that I could figure everything else out. But now I know that I was a big dummy. Instead, it's better to have a good solid foundation for your story to then add on to with all your fancy dandy shonen stuff. You can't have cool fights that carry a lot of weight if your story is ass. No, 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 what did work? I've been too negative. I believe what I did best was the interactions between characters. That's what I got a lot of feedback on the most. People seemed to really like the character interactions and conversations. And I can't really think about any other things that I did <laughs> well. I don't think what I made is terrible, but knowing what I know now, when I read my own work, all I can think about is, damn, I could have done that so much better. What the fuck am I reading? After all it's said and done, creating manga is a journey. And sometimes, it's a never-ending journey. How you change as a person is reflected in the work you make, and sometimes, that's not a good thing. What the fuck is this piece of shit? Sometimes it's really not a good thing. But other times it's great. I like to look back at all the previous manga I've made and see how my art style has changed and how much I've improved. Which is why if you're making art, you should never give up. Keep drawing, learn, and grow as a person. I also wanted to make this video because I'm not a professional or anything yet. I'm still just a guy learning how to draw and write better. So a self-reflective video like this is one I thought would be fun to do and I hope you guys enjoyed seeing and learning this stuff. If you guys want to see more of my old work with me going over it, let me know in the comments below. I have a lot more other than executioners that I'm embarrassed to show, but if you guys want to see it, I'll show you. And if you guys wanted to read executioners, please don't. It's in the description below. But keep in mind, it's a series that I'm not planning to do anything with anytime soon. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell, please. Thank you, thank you so much, thank you.